Hi everyone, Brett back, altitude scale modeling, back at the bench after a week of hard wearing at a hardware convention, and now I'm here, and look what was waiting for me. Model Collect 172B52G Strata Fortress, beautiful box art, 673 millimeters length, 783 millimeter width, 172 millimeter high. <clears throat> A little bit about it if you want to hold on. Pause it and read it. Then some nice CAD drawings. We've all seen these online, but there you go. <clears throat> Nothing really on that side. <coughs> Excuse me. You've got cartograph decals. There's, I'm guessing that's a, huh, where you put the decals. And your paint guide, and then the weapons that are included. I have not looked at this yet. I'm not even sure if there's a review of this online. Yet, probably is. But, we're going to look at it now. And yes, I've heard that there's issues with it and other things, but... It looks like a B-52 when it's done. I'm not going to have anybody from the Air Force or from SAC over here um, reviewing my work, and I don't do model shows. I mean, I do model shows, but I don't do model contests. So, I'm sure it's going to be good enough for me. And for most people. So there's two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. A whole bunch of weapon screws. Those are on top. Here's the directions. Here's PE. Here's decals. Here is clear parts. Alright, let me move this out the way. Let's start with this big bag of fuselage and wing parts. I hope everyone's been well. A lot of us who are old, er. Okay. All right. So the bag inside the bag. These here. Get the wings out of the way. As I was saying, a lot of us who are older built the Ravel monogram, monogram Ravel B-72 when we were younger. It was a nice kit for its age. I still have one that's not built. I may, eventually I will build it. Maybe compare the two. But here, the two fuselage, center fuselage halves. Obviously they made this modular because we know they're making an H. I think they're making a B, so they're making multiple versions of this. I'm told they're limited run, so this is the bottom, this is the top. But nice panel lines. Seems to go together okay. Let me press it together. It's got a full interior, which you won't be able to see most of it because the only windows are the little front windows, but you'll know it's there. But you'll be able to see some of it through the bomb bay and the wheel wells. But nice interior detail. The ejector pin marks. Looks like they've been sanded and rubbed down a little bit. Here, here, here. Polished out maybe. You can see the marks. Recessed panel lines, venting, panels, same on both sides. So, that looks alright. Like I said, this is just the center part of the fuselage, and that's how long it is already. Since the wings are opening right here, we'll do the wings. Ah, they jumped. Wing 
and wing and wing. So, top wings, bottom wings. Let's start with the top wing. Again, very nice recessed detail. There's no rivet detail. I don't know if there is rivet detail. And this is the bottom wing. I hope I said that. There's where the wing wheels go out and the flaps. It's got movable flaps. Again, looks like they polished out the ejector pin marks. This one's still raised, so you're going to want to move that. These are still raised a little bit. As you get farther down, they're going to probably need sanded out as well. And there is some interior detail where the flaps are going to be down. They do have ejector pin marks inside there. So if the flaps are down enough, you're going to have to have those all cleaned up. There's none in this one, just in this one. This is the detail from where the wheel goes. Again, they tried to polish these out, but they're still raised through there. And then we've got, again, really good detail. These are all raised. The vortex generators. And you're talking, you know, Massive wingspan. Raise the camera up. Oh, I said raise the camera up. So, you're talking. Here's my ruler. And I know what it said 100 and 100 millimeters. There is 30. So there's 30. So about 33 inches wingspan. <clears throat> Better have a good place to display it or hang it. Does got some attachment points on there. Like I said, you're going to need to sand out a couple of these that were in there. They seem to go together okay. So, let's slip these back in the bag. And let's get the two front fuselage pieces. Now we can zoom back in. And we've got the great big old still attached. They cut it off of that one. I wonder why that is. Someone just. It looked like they started to because it was half cut through. So, gone now. Again, modular because there's other versions of this. Oh, sorry. Other versions of this. A really nice detail, nothing inside. When you install the cockpit, be wary of this ejector pin mark there. This one's all sanded real smooth and gone. This one's got a little bit of raise to it. I can be able to get it together because these two, where the sprue gates were, is still raised right there. As you can see, you'll need to clean those up. Come on, get in there. <sighs> Nicely detailed. It's definitely much nicer detail than the monogram one. And then we've got the rear parts of the fuselage. This is some heavy sprues on there. Really thick and heavy sprues. No detail inside those either. So there's only detail inside where the bomb bay goes and the wheel wells. There you go. B-52's have been in service forever. God, what, going on 75 years almost? 
if my math is correct. And they just keep updating it because, you know, good is good. Two more screws here. Here we've got wing tanks. These look like they're part for the engine nacelles. Landing gear leg. There's no... No real, um... Burring. Looks like it's well molded real nice, except this part's broke. Came off of there, goes there, and is broken. So, I gotta be careful with that. Let's see if I can stick some glue right there and get it back in place. Oh, nope, fell right off. So, watch your parts, because that part here, this part, goes on there and broke right off. It should have been attached to that or there, and it wasn't, because it's all in one bag running, running around. Inside the landing gear bay doors looks okay, no sprue gates, ejector pin marks, anything like that. But it is kind of disappointing that they molded it, or they bagged it in such a way that this part came off. Engine nacelles, engines, I'm thinking these are probably part of the landing gear bays. And, I mean it all looks good. Inside the landing gear doors, no ejector pin marks. And there's the detail in there. So, we got us some nice detail. No ejector pin marks in the way. These all look good and polished down. These are those raised kind that you just need to break off. They just cut them off and left them on there, the big chunky ones. All over this whole part right here, those parts. All right. In the bag, looks like another one of the Landing gear struts, these are probably for the outer wing wheels, came off. <coughs> I highly recommend check all your bags because now that's two parts off of sprues, one broken. And while I'm thinking about it, I'm gonna tape this part on there so I know where it goes when the time comes. it with some tape. So I know where it goes when I go to open this bag and build it down the line. Somebody let me know if they got this kit, if theirs was the same way. This bag has matching screws. Let's see if Model Collect has a heat crispy loud bags. These are engine parts too. If Model Collect has um, a parts department, try to get that replaced. These are the main landing gear, you know, it doesn't have front or rear landing gear, it's got that inline landing gear. Ejector seats. Nice detail. Backs of the wheels. Engines. There's the main heavy landing gear. These do have a slight seam line on them, which you probably need to clean up. These are okay though. Looks like shocks from a model car. There's the wheels. Um, no weight on wheels, but the detail's nice. So there we go, the oleos, I think they're called. Alright, like I said, two screws of that. In loud, crispy bags. 
next we have a less crispy bag full of elevators and rudders and flaps, cockpit parts. See, there's another one came off. I don't want it to damage. So I cut it off farther away. So these are, see, there's a big one right there. See that? That's going to be cut off and sanded before you can put them together. Then these, these are the ones with the spur gates that go on this part instead of on the edge. The exterior detail is really nice. These are the outboard wheels. Instrument panel looks good. Some boxes detail. More bulkheads and panels. I mean, the detail looks good. Not sure how much you'll see inside the cockpit. But the detail, there's a ladder. There's the wheels. There's the detail on the elevators. There's the instrument panel detail. Assuming there's um, stickers for the instrument panel. But we'll find out. This bag, which is the last of the aircraft itself. And we got weapons. These are the flaps, and they're big, and they're one piece, and the ailerons. So this is, must be the tail, so it doesn't have a removable aileron. These must be the elevators. Okay. Flaps, bulkheads. I'm not sure what these are. Bulkheads, it looks like part of the engine. Bombay doors. Bulkheads, cockpit floor, more bulkheads, then the flaps, which are very thick and heavy, and then there's no detail inside the bomb bay door, and I don't know if there would be or not. And then we have one of the, I'm thinking it's the first stage compressor. And in here, we've got a couple more parts loose. So, if there's supposed to be another one of these, there's not. So obviously, it can't be a first stage compressor because there's how many engines on this? Eight. There's only one of those. Okay. Check your bags, loose parts everywhere. Like I was saying, if these are the tails, there is no movable rudder. And it's almost got to be the tails because these have got to be the elevators. We'll see when we check the directions. And a little bit of PE from guessing many antennas, very, very thin. A little bit of black PE, it looks like. That's um, instrument paneling and um, side panel detail. And then those. Clear parts. They're very clear, no seam lines in them. 70 second scale, so not overly thick and unimpressive. They look good. And you've got a great big bag, which, funnily oh, enough, this is actually sealed. Heat sealed, well, not heat sealed, self sealing. So, two of those, four of those, six of those. Six of these with Tomahawk missiles. Tomahawk cruise missiles. Those are fun just to have. Display those all on their own. I'm sure that's a rack for supporting them. <clears throat> so like I said, six of those. And then we've got 
two of these, which look like torpedoes, but I'm not 100% sure. But two sprues of those, and a few sprues of fins. That looks to be it. Everything is on those 10 sprues, 14 sprues for the weapons. Decals, photograph decals. No, there are no instrument panel decals. There are walkway decals. There are some stencils. And then these are the markings. I do not even see the U.S. insignia. Maybe there's two sheets in here. There's no U.S. insignia on there. There's Strategic Air Command. Right? Or is it Tactical Air Command? Old Crow Express. And there's just one sheet. We got U.S. Air Force, but uh, oh, there's the stars and bars right there, right in front of my face. Right there. So, they look like your typical wonderful cartograph decals. There's a plus for the kit. Now the Ravel one, as far as I know, you can still pick up online anywhere from fifty to seventy-five dollars. This is going to cost you hundred and twenty or so, depending on where you get it. The monogram one does not have the level of detail this one does, but like I said, it's still a good kit. <clears throat> There's a little bit about the B-52. I'm going to pause and read it. Buff was its nickname. Sprue maps. So, whatever that one part was, it is by itself and it's that one sprue gate was broken off. According to this, both of the Cockpit noses, front noses of the fuselage were supposed to be connected to that sprue and neither were. I think they could have just been cut off. PE, five of those, five of those, three of those weapons, five of those weapons. And then you start, as with most aircraft, with the fuselage, four seats. And your bulkheads, your instrument panels, PE, there were no decals, so you need to paint them and detail them yourself. Or I'm sure Edward will have something soon. More bulkheads, more cockpits, there's the ladder to get up to that level. Five, six, seven, eight, and then you go into the landing gear and the weapons. There's the rotating, that's what that one part was for. It's for the front end of the rotating weapons bay. For launching your tomahawks, right there. And PE is for all the tomahawk fins. Not for antennas for the aircraft. <coughs> and one part that broke is a hose unit that goes right there. Then you're putting in the bulkheads for the bomb bay. And you're putting in the side windows and making sure everything's lined up with the cockpit area. Putting in all the windows and glass, which you'll need to mask up. Putting in the more stuff in the bomb bay area. Ribbing and the landing gear you do have to put in first before you paint because it's going in there and it's attached to that bulkhead there, same with there. Then you put the two center fuselage halves together with the bomb bay doors open. I'd probably tape the bomb bay doors shut or white putty them shut so I could paint it. Then this rear section and then the back section and then 
display weapons. There's a display tomahawk with a base. Engines, mini engines. Uh, these are the what I thought were torpedoes. These are on underwing pylons right here. So full loadout. Plus you can have tomahawks on there. <clears throat> Wings together. Remember, check those ejector pin marks. There's the alignment of the outboard wheels. There's putting it all three together, four together. Sorry, attaching the wings and attaching the elevators and the tail. There's what the bomb base should look like when it's assembled. There's what the cockpit should look like when it's assembled. Um, is there supposed to be weight in here? I did not see. Uh, where's my nose section? Nose, nose, nose. Only the nose, nose. Nose section. If there is weight, they're not telling you to put weight in it. And turn the page. And you have color call out. And they're using ammo of mid colors. Many of you do not like ammo of mid colors. I do not have ammo of mid colors at this time in my life. So I'll just find. I might just go old school and use old model master. But I love the paint scheme. It's going to be a lot of paint. And most of the model master military colors are gone now. MRP or Hataka or Tamiya. Vallejo. There's colors everywhere. Use the MIG. Whatever makes you happy. So that's it. I love the color scheme. One B-52G strategic bomber. So, as I said, I am not going to have any Air Force personnel over to my house. It's not going to be an internet model show. Will it look like a B-52 when it's complete? Yes. Am I concerned about accuracy and fit issues? Accuracy? No, I'm not 100% concerned about that. Fit issues? Yeah, I'm a little concerned. Because, you know... Let me bust out some Dispia clippers right here and get that off of there. Get that off of there. Give it a little bit of a rub down. And a little bit of rub down. Just to smooth it out. Nothing fancy yet. So those will not be an issue. Just because they've only got one placement point right there in the nose, you are going to have to be precise in your gluing. If you do it right, it's going to fit up right. It's going to be okay. See, I made that seam line disappear. But it's going to require patience and hopefully the cockpit inside will help the alignment and get it going together. There's the entry and the exit. Again, push it together okay. You can get mostly rid of that seam. So, yeah, fit issues might not be too terrible. Accuracy and broken parts. You know, like I said, accuracy. I want accurate, but I'm not going to suffer if I don't. Those broken parts, that really bums me out. You see there's a little bit of flash right here already. Got rid of it, but there shouldn't be any. It's a brand new kit. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. I, if you're a B-52 fan, fan and what version you're into, I say get it. As soon as your specified version comes out, I'll probably get the H, because it's the newer version too. And that's probably where I'll stop. I won't go get A's or B's or anything. I don't need them all. So, thanks for watching. Another kit for the collection that I'm going to build because I'm a kit collector and a kit builder. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day.